Um, as my daughter would say, I want juice. <laughs> Can daddy get a jupe up here? Uh, I don't, is somebody joining me? Or is it just me? Really, it's just me? I get nervous alone. Can I have somebody come up here? Uh, yeah, yeah. Get up here, I dare you. You take some questions. She's getting up. She's like, don't tell me. I'll, I'll march right up there and ask questions. Um, how's everybody enjoying the weekend so far? So not so good? Um, that's good, that's good. Who's been your favorite uh, panel so far? Jordan. Jordan. Aside from me, I mean, I, that's an obvious answer. Nobody? That's unfortunate. Well, let's see if we can get them. Really? Old Rookie Gill coming, coming in, uh, making some headway, I like that. You know, Gill is, um, what? The effort just gave us count. Oh, good, I was just about to, I was just about to pour some stupid water. Uh, this is an interesting apple juice glass. Yeah, that's... How many, how many uh, Americans do we have in the crowd right now? For those, I don't know if they have that, this in uh, England, or Italy, or anywhere else in Europe. Um, Treetop? Apple juice? Anybody? Yeah, that was... That's what this is. Uh-huh, yep. That's, that's what that is. Uh, well, look, it's, uh, it's, it's so fun to, to come here. We, we love coming to Rome. Um, I know we've got some, uh, some visitors here. I know we've got some locals here. I know we've got some uh, um, people that have driven here, flown here, uh, biked here, apparently. <laughs> what kind of moron does that? Um, so uh, anyway, we're, we're, we're all super stoked to be here and, and we're, we're thankful that you give us a reason to come here. Uh, not that Rome isn't a city that you want to come to anyway, because it's amazing. Um, but you guys really make it special, so uh, thank you for, for that. <laughs> it's, it's the apple juice talking. Uh, but um, uh, no, I, I just I, I want to say a sincere thanks uh, for, for keeping us coming back, uh, not only to Rome every year, but to television every year. Because uh, it, is, it is you that, that keeps us employed, keeps us uh, going on this crazy train that is supernatural. And um, next year is going to be interesting. I'm not going to lie, I talked about this in my meet and greet. Uh, we have a whole, a whole shift of, of change of people uh, coming into the show. Luckily, not much in the way of cast and not much in the way of crew. Uh, but we've, lost, we've, we've had some writers move on. We've had some uh, some editors move on. We've had some producers move on. We've had uh, we've had a lot of change. So um, I uh, I know that you guys are, are are awesome and amazing and very forgiving. Um, and hopefully you won't have to be because I, I I think that uh, I think that we've got a really cool road ahead of us and I think we've got some cool stories to tell and and, and I do know the people that are in, are in charge right now and they will not lead us astray, so uh, have confidence in us. Um, let's start with some questions. How about you over there? Hi. Um, if you could choose any either historical, drama, thriller, fantasy, science fiction thing to direct, what would it be? <laughs> I've got to make it hard? Oh, your question. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Gone are the days of favorite color. <laughs> that one was so easy. Um, thanks, I got a good laugh in the back. I appreciate that. Hot crowd, hot crowd. 
Uh, <laughs> no comedy elbows yet. We haven't reached that point. Um, ooh, that's that's really tough. Um, I will say that I have a, and I think I've actually said this before. Um, there is a project that does not exist, but it exists in my mind. But it, it refers to an old song. Does that count? If you can explain it, then yes. Uh, yeah, if you make sense of what the hell you're talking about right now. I, um, so, some of you are familiar with the old Marty Robbins tune, El Paso? Look it up. I will. Okay. So it's an old cowboy song my, my dad used to play on vinyl. And um, uh, I always thought that that story that he tells in that song would make a really cool short film. And I always wanted to direct that. Um, so see, I, I, I think reasonable. I don't think like, uh, I'd like to redo Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I'm like, mm, how about I just make a short film about a song I heard many years ago when I was a kid. Uh, so, any, but honestly, that that's been something. And then there's um, there's other projects that I, I hope to do in the future, and I, I wish I could make into something. Uh, I'll give you that one for now. That one's that one's the first one that comes to mind. Okay, thanks. Hi. Hi. Um, well, I'm asking this on behalf of a group of friends. Um, so I've noticed that in the show, Finn has an obsession with BustyAsianBeauty.com <laughs> across the day 11. And if you could make a guess, what start his obsession and when? Probably when he saw his first Busty Asian. <laughs> and he's like, I need more of that in my life. <laughs> I know that's what I thought. I mean... <laughs> we can edit that out, right? <laughs> um, I, I have to give Eric Kripke the credit for that. That was his brainchild, and uh, he, he has some, some interesting uh, his mind works in very mysterious ways, <laughs> and uh, and those are the that's that's the great thing about great writers is they write details, and that little detail is something that makes Dean a layered character, and it was one of the many reasons why I love playing this character and I love telling the story and and being a part of this is because of the details. And those details and those layers really make a complex character, and complex characters are interesting. Um, which is why after 11 years, you're asking a question about a detail that was written in a writer's room on a computer eight years ago. Um, and that's one of the reasons I love doing this show, and I think it's probably one of the subliminal reasons that you guys enjoy watching the show. Uh, is because of the complexities of these characters and the details that they have. And, and that's just one of the many things that makes Dean Dean. He loves it. He loves looking at those magazines. He loves acting out. <laughs> he likes driving that car. And he likes the family business. So, anyway, there right, you go. Thank you. Sure. Hi. Uh, hi, Jensen. Uh, my name is Sonia. Uh, my question is uh, also about the show. Uh, uh, <laughs> Great! <laughs> uh, yeah, basically, uh, I was wondering, uh, in your opinion, why did uh, Sam and Dean uh, react so differently uh, to Cass being possessed by Lucifer? Because it seemed to me and to some of my friends that uh, Sam seemed a lot of a lot less concerned, while well, Dean was much more upset about it, like losing sleep over it and 
everything. <laughs> and uh, I was just wondering, what do you think the reasoning is behind that? Because Dean is a much more emotionally invested character. And because uh, Jensen thinks about his, his role, whereas Jared has basically just phoned it in for the past four years. Thank you. I'm just kidding. I, I mean, I'm not kidding, but I'll give you a serious answer. Um, you know, it's it's. Sorry, I just realized I was guilty of blasphemy. <laughs> Um, <laughs> shut up, K Mark. Um, so I I think that I think Sam was more concerned with the big picture and knew that that the possession that Lucifer had with Cass was a necessary evil, um, l literally, uh, and Dean even though he was also concerned with the, you know, the grand picture, was highly concerned for his friend. And um, I'm trying to think, did, there was, a, this is the problem with shooting back to back to back to back to back for 23 episodes at a time. You, you shoot scenes and you forget what episode they actually were in because especially these last four episodes, because they were literally were, it, it should have been like a four part ending. Yeah, it feels like that as well. Right, so did you, I did not see the last aired episode. Was there a scene where Dean and... Uh, Amara apparently is about to kill God and uh, kill, kills Lucifer or does whatever to him. Uh, we don't really know. Okay, so the scene has not happened yet. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Because it's a big scene. And it'll explain a lot of what you're asking. <laughs> However, uh, so I, I think Dean was Dean is just really concerned about the 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 outcome of what this is going to do to Cass, and if Cass is ever going to you know recover or fall back into the fray, or whatever, you know, yeah, it, it be be back on the team, or if if this is a you know a sacrifice that he's going to have to live with, because um, Dean wouldn't live with that lightly. Uh, sit. Um, look, he likes his teammates, all right? Um, so, uh, and I think Sam, again, Sam was, was, is probably, and I believe this to be Jared's choice, he, he, he might argue differently, but I think that, um, that it was more of a choice to uh, be concerned with the bigger picture and and one of these like listen we'll figure that out once we get this done so and it it gets it kind of gets figured out in the next episode you guys will you guys should should enjoy it i don't want to promise anything but thank you thank you so much all right hi hi Justin. uh thank you for being here too and, uh... you're welcome <laughs> i love it uh, uh, we know that you've been going to a lot of conventions and it's mostly, uh, it's mostly... Yeah, like two, three, four. <laughs> Team. <laughs> so it's mostly like we're asking questions and telling stories and then you're answering questions and listening to our stories. And I wonder if there are any questions you want to ask us fans about? <laughs> Yeah? What are you doing? Now? Or later? Later's good. Um, yeah, I, I have tons of questions for you guys. Um, and I love talking to you. Uh, 
one of, I, I, in fact, for me, personally, um, one of the, one of my favorite things, and I have a lot of favorite parts about coming to these things, which is why I, we, which is why we do so many of them, um, is the, the back and forth between the fans. Um, and, and really, I mean, it's, I even use the term fan loosely, like it, it's, it's a, this is a family. Uh, and so when I can sit in a room, like at the, at the meet and greets, and I know all of you couldn't, can't be there, and, and you haven't, maybe a lot of you haven't gotten to, to experience that, but it's a small room around a table, and it's just a, a, a back and forth, and I can actually talk to you guys, and I can get feedback, and I can ask you questions, and, and granted I'm field, fielding most of the questions, however, the, it's, it's just, um, there's an ebb and flow that, that happens, uh, not only there, but also here. Um, that really fuels us, and I, I've, I've said that before. Um, so the questions that that I have for you, a lot of times arise when we're filming, and they're questions that I have to ask and then answer for you. Because it's like, gosh, what would they what would they like right now? I think they'd probably like this. You're probably right. <laughs> You've had too much apple juice. <laughs> Again, right. However, I'm gonna go with that choice. Um. <laughs> I'm stalling. <laughs> Help. Uh, okay, I have a question for you. Where are you from? Uh, I'm originally from China. Living where? I'm living in Scotland right now. Scotland! Yes. Do we have any Scots in the audience? <laughs> One. <laughs> and that was Misha. Um, Uh, 